we began a stewardship series, and we learned last week that God owns it all. Therefore, we must give him the control. He owns everything. Now, I know for some of us that may be news, and we still are uh, not quite up to date, but please know, ma'am, sir, God owns it all. That car you drove here in? Well, it's a Nubia Hoopty. God owns it all. The very hair on your head, whether it's yours or sewn in. God owns. God owns it all. Just keep looking straight. It's all right. <laughs> the hair that you used to have. <laughs> God owns the follicles. <laughs> God owns it all. God owns it all. Y'all going to get silly today, are you? <clears throat> Since God owns it all, what is that, where does that put us? That puts us in the position of stewards. That puts us in the position of managers. We're stewards. We say it every week. We're stewards of God's resources. We're stewards of God's resources. When the Bible speaks of stewardship, you can look in the Old Testament. You'll begin to see that um, Abraham had a gentleman named Eliezer. He was his steward. He was a manager over the household, one who could do business in the, in, on behalf of the owner. Um, when you even look further, you look at Joseph, who was a steward, really a pharaoh. Um, he managed Egypt. He really gave oversight to what was going on there. And uh, we understand as New Testament, in the New Testament believers, as New Testament believers, God has entrusted to us precious promises. He's given us his kingdom. And we are stewards over everything. So everything that we have, we literally are stewards of it. We are managers of it. When we look in uh, Luke's gospel, chapter number 16, we're going to look at two parts of it. The first part, we'll look at a parable, and then we'll look at principles that Jesus taught from this parable. When we look at verse number one of Luke 16, and I'm reading from a New King James, it says, He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account for your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master has taken my, the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I've resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of all. So he said to him, Take your bill. Sit down quickly. Write 50. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. Hmm. Verse 8 presents a twist. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Stop right there. When Jesus is teaching this, we have to understand the position of a steward. The steward was really a place of honor. In fact, some people actually sold themselves to, uh, uh, to become somebody's steward because it meant that it was a place of status. It meant that they were the ones who were overseeing quite a large sum of uh, money. 
And so let's just say, you know, you had, um, here we go, Mr. Kelvin Phillips, and you, you, you hear about him needing a steward, and you know how much Mr. Phillips has. And so because of how weighty Mr. Phillips' coffers are, how full they are, you would give yourself to him because it was certainly an honor to be Mr. Phillips' steward. And, and you, you, you heard about Mr. Gilstrap and what's going on with him and Mr. Taylor, Miss Richardson. And so you knew that these were people of status and you wanted to be their steward. So they did whatever was necessary to become their stewards. This guy, however, when we look at it, the master heard word. Something's going on with it. Something's going on with my stuff. Have you ever had a feeling something's going on with your stuff? <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever put something somewhere and you just, you knew something, something about somebody had messed with it? And he knew that somebody had messed, this guy had messed with it. And listen to me, this is a, this is a note for us. Uh, a steward was to be faithful. A steward was to be trustworthy, was to be loyal. Listen to this. A steward also spoke to the person's capability because you don't entrust something to somebody that don't have the ability to do anything. So that, <laughs> let, let, me, let me just get us in here real quick. That says something about you. If you're stewards of God's resources, that means God knows that you're capable. And he gives to you according to your ability. But this guy, uh, he had wasted his master's good. Word came back. And his master was getting ready to do something about it. And between the time that the master was getting ready to do something and this guy, uh, 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 and this, and, and this guy said, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. Call the debtors. Come here, come here, come here. What do you owe? And we read the story. He began to reduce the debts. He had the authority to literally reduce the debts of the master's debtors. That's authority, y'all. That's authority. And... The thing is, the twist in the story is this. The master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. The master, the word there means he literally praised the unjust steward because he dealt shrewdly. Everybody say shrewdly. Now, when you look at that word, shrewdly there, it means that to be able to act with great practical intelligence. To be able to act with great practical intelligence. In other words, you're prudent. You know what to do. I scratch my head on this text. The reason I'm scratching my head is because... Why in the world would Jesus say the master commended him, the unjust steward, this joke had been stealing from me? So what's going on? Why in the world would he do this? I submit to you, uh, this, notice the rest of that verse. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And this is it, this is it, this is it. The steward was able to see an opportunity in unfavorable circumstances. Hear me. Let me see if I can expound it a little bit more. At no point are you released from your stewardship. No circumstance releases you, absolves you of your stewardship. No matter what's going on, listen to me, whether you caused it or somebody else caused it, you're still managing God's stuff. And God's saying, at every point, you need to look at what I have and manage it properly, irrespective of what's going on in you or around you. And if you are my steward, God's saying, listen to this, he's saying this, 
you have to make sure that you are always able to see and seize the opportunity. You can't be able, you can't be ashamed, should I say, to prosper in a bad situation. We're going to be all right? Now, he said the sons of this world are more shrewd than the sons of light. Now, let me just tell you what it's not saying. He's not saying be unjust. He's not saying now it's time you can go ahead and lose your integrity. Now it's time you can go ahead and be illegal finally. No. He's not saying that. What he's saying is, I want you to be able to, be, to make wise decisions, prudent decisions, be shrewd in the way you handle everything going on in your life because you still are my steward, it's still my stuff, and I'm looking at how you manage it. Wow. So here are some principles I believe we can learn from this text. When we look at verse number nine, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Let me read it again. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. Mammon there means money. Mammon is what? Money. That when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Here's the principle. If you're taking notes, here's number one. Resources are to be used for kingdom influence. Say it with me. Resources are to be used for kingdom influence. Say it like you believe it. Resources are to be used for kingdom influence. He's saying this. This is what I want you to understand. God, if he can trust you, will take you to the top if you'll give him the glory. He'll take you to the top if he knows that he can trust you to give him the glory in the midst of it. You won't stand up there and say, you know, it was by my own bootstraps I pulled myself up and all this kind of stuff. You'll begin to realize, baby, I'm here because God put me here. I am what I am by the grace of God. Everything that you see, God did it for me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, what you see today would not be. And God is saying, I'll take you places you've never seen, before, never dreamed of if you'd only trust me and give me the glory in the midst of it. Resources are to be used for kingdom influence, for kingdom influence. In the midst of it all, will you finally say, I don't care. Be like Abraham of old. No man made me rich. God did this. Come, come on, say, God did this. Say it again. Look at somebody and tell them, God did this. Your degree, God did this. Your position, God did this. Your education, God did this. Wherever it is you have, God did this. If he not, come on now. God did this. No man, God did, come on, say, God did this. And see, if you'll go ahead and give him the glory, go ahead and give him the honor for it, go ahead and give him the praise, no good thing will he withhold from those who will walk up rightly from him. Who will walk up rightly with him before him. Understand God is God and he can pull one down and he can put up another. 
promotion doesn't come from the east nor the west, but the Lord is the one who will promote. You know good and well there are some of you sitting in this very room today. The very position that you have, naturally you shouldn't be there. But God Almighty opened the door for you, and it's time for you to give him the glory. The resource is for kingdom influence. Amen. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Don't you get there and start being ashamed. I did not necessarily like the outcome of the game on Monday night, although I'm from Alabama. I was pulling for the Georgia Bulldogs. But when the quarterback for University of Alabama stood up and said, he said, I, he started talking, he said, oh, my parents will be mad at me. First, let me give praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then I switched states and I said, roll tide. Then I came back and I said, I'm sorry, Bulldogs. But what I'm getting at is this. If you give him the glory, he'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, or even imagine. Oh, my. Glory to God, glory to God. Oh, I'm on my way somewhere to give him glory. I'm on my way somewhere, somewhere to influence somebody for the kingdom of God. The resources that I have is for influence. Oh, now. All right. Now, now, now. Let me go on. Here's another principle that this text teaches us. If we go on, verse 10 says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Here's the principle. Here's the principle. Resources used faithfully will bring increase. Let me say it again. Resources used faithfully will bring increase. Say it with me now. Resources used faithfully will bring increase. Now, Please look at what the text is saying. He who is faithful, and this text says, in what is least. What is least? Get out of your mind when my ship comes in mentality. God's not waiting for your ship to come in. He's seeing what you're going to do with the canoe. You understand? <laughs> He's seeing what you're going to do with the boat. People tell me, when my ship come in, I'm, no, 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 no. He that is faithful in what? So God is looking at how you handle what you have right now. What's in your hand right now and what you're doing with it? He's looking at how you manage what it is that's in your hand right now. And he's saying, I'm watching over it. I'm watching over it. I'm watching over it. And if you're faithful in least, you'll be faithful in, in much. In much. It'll bring increase in your life. Now, this is the thing. This is the thing. When we start thinking like I'm waiting on a particular day, I'm waiting on all of this, we undermine, we, we, we belittle where we currently are. There are some lessons that you can learn where you currently are that if you don't get them here, you will not implement them there. If you are a scoundrel with a little, 
you're going to be a scoundrel with a lot. If you are unfaithful with a little, you're going to be unfaithful with a lot. Hear me. There are people talking about, you know, this is what I'm just believing God. I just want me a house. I just want me a house. Are you cleaning the apartment? Are you paying the rent on time? Mm-hmm. I just want, you know, I just want me a luxury vehicle. Are you getting the hoopty serviced? We okay today? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I used to drive, oh, Lord. I used to drive a car. It was a, uh, well, I, I've, I've had several raggedy cars in my life. But they were clean. They were clean. I had one broke down, but it was clean. God, look at how you handle that thing. I won't go through all all, all the details. But please know, God looks at how you handle what it is you have in your hand currently to determine how you're going to handle more. You know, I just, I just, I, people, I just, you know, I just want me a husband. I want me a husband. How you doing with the boyfriend? <laughs> You're not even faithful to him that you want a husband. <laughs> you just want a wedding. I look like I came to the right church today. I showed up at the right address. The Holy Ghost showed up, I, should I say, at the right address. So what I'm saying, man, I, you know, I, just, I can't wait to have me a family. You get a job. Okay, let me go on. I, now, 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 now. So the way you handle little is the way you're going to handle much. So he says you got to be faithful in that which is the least. Let me move on. And then verse, verse 11 says, therefore, if you've not been faithful, listen to this in verse 11, in unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust true riches. Faithful in money. Unrighteous mammon is money. So God is looking at the way you are, way you manage money to determine if you can manage true riches. You're praying for anointing. God, just anoint me. I want to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. I want the power of God flowing through me. And you won't even tithe. I want to preach across the world. You won't give God a dollar out to ten. And God is, look, don't play me. God's looking at how you manage all of that. Because he says, if, I, if you're unfaithful and unrighteous mammon, meaning the way you handle money, how in the world am I going to commit to you true riches? He didn't, he didn't even call money true riches. He didn't even call money true riches. He said, how am I going to give you true riches? In other words, how am I going to entrust souls to you if I, you can't handle dollars? Then notice what he said here. Again, again being faithful, resources used faithfully will bring increase. Notice he said in verse number 12, And if you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Oh, I just want me a business. I just want me a business. How you doing with the job? I do fine with the job, and they just get on my nerve at the job. I'm so tired of the job. There you go. You're spewing. You're cursing your job. 
So how are you handling, how are you managing the job? How, how well, you know, and, and they just, everybody, everybody just wrong at the job. Everybody's wrong. <laughs> Hear this. Some of us don't realize that we, when we work, we work as unto the Lord. And God is looking at how you work to determine your promotion, to determine the increase that comes. Hold your finger there. Look, look at the scripture, Ephesians chapter number 6. Because some of us are looking where we're currently working for the promotion. And you've boxed God in. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 5. It says, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. Employees, be obedient to your employers. With, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive from the Lord, the same from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. Stop right there. What he's saying is this. God is looking at how you're currently handling that which is another man's. And God is the one who will reward you for your faithfulness. He didn't say I'm going to reward you in the same place. He will reward you, though. So even though another man may be getting on your nerve, you work as unto the Lord, and you be faithful in that, because if you're faithful in that which is another man's, God will give you that which is your own. Amen. Amen. So resources used faithfully will bring increase. Let me, here's, the, here's the last principle. Here's the last principle. So far, I've told you this. Resources are to be used for kingdom influence. Secondly, resources used faithfully will bring increase. And here's the last one. Resources are never to become an idol. Resources are never to become an idol. Verse 13 says, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. John said it like this, if any man loves the world or the things of the world, the love of the Father, it didn't say it diminished. It says it's not in him. It's not in him. First Timothy says the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, now, hear me. You don't have to have money to love money. You could be broke and love money. So, listen. Money is a terrible master. It's a wonderful servant. Wonderful servant. It'll go across the world. It'll bless people. But hear me in this. When you begin to serve it, you're in a danger zone. How do you know when you're serving it? When your decisions are totally financially based, money based. When you rather than consulting God, will consult money first. I got me one good amen there. If you'll say, I, I, you know what, I, I'm just going I'm, I'm to I'm, I'm gonna move, I'm going to move. Where are you going to move? I'm, I'm going to move out of state. Why are you moving out of state? Because they gave me a raise. Well, have you even asked God, should you move? Well, Pastor, that's the answer right there. Money said I should move. Oh, you hit a danger zone. Because now, rather than consulting God, you're consulting money. Come on, say, help me, Lord. 
now, 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 now. So we, we have to make sure that resources never become an idol. Listen to this. Wall Street Journal uh, gives some sound financial advice about money. They said this a few years ago in a statement they read. Money is an article which may be used as a universal passport to everywhere except heaven. And as a universal provider of everything except happiness. Know what they're saying? Money is not going to get you into heaven. And m money is not going to make you happy. Money is simply a tool. Let it be a servant. Use it for God's glory, for God's honor, your own enjoyment. But hear me in this. We're merely stewards. Everything belongs to God. Years ago, I was in seminary, and they had a, uh, taken a class in, um, in stewardship. And this is one of the definitions they gave in stewardship of stewardship. Listen to this. Stewardship is the management of God's possessions according to God's values in pursuit of God's agenda. Let me say it again. Stewardship is the management of God's possession according to God's values in pursuit of God's agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, if we manage with this principle in mind, I believe God can tell us, well done, good and faithful servants. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come and be ruler over many. Amen? Amen. Amen. So how are you handling God's stuff? You doing all right with it? Amen. Amen. Mm. Every head bowed, please, every eye closed. Thank you, Lord. Some people in here, you need to dethrone money. If you, if, you, if you say, Pastor, you know what? I've let money become an too important of a decision maker. It's above God. I didn't say you should not consider the cost or anything like that. The Bible tells us to count the cost. But if you consult money over and above God, that's idolatry. And that we have to repent of. That we have to change. Just right where you are, you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to, I, 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 I'm guilty. And I need to change that right now. I want to dethrone money. Just slip your hand up and you can put it back down. Thank you. I see hands across the room. You can put it back down. Father, in the name of Jesus. I mean, everybody pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. Jesus, take the throne of my heart. My, make my heart your home. I dethrone money. I make it a servant. And Lord, I'm your servant. I belong to you. I give myself to you afresh. And I repent of putting money in a place that rightfully belongs to you. In Jesus' name, I will acknowledge you in all my ways, and I thank you for directing my paths. I trust in you with all my heart, and I do not lean to my own understanding. Thank you for working it out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come and experience transforming worship at New Covenant Christian Ministries. We have two locations. Our West Campus is located at 1760 Phillips Road, Lithonia, Georgia. Our East Campus is located at 14147 Highway 278, Covington, Georgia. For more information, please visit our website at www.newcov.org.